So this is part three in our three-part series of publishing your ebook to Kindle. Um, this week is going to be about formatting your Word document. Now, professionals do not use Word in order to upload their documents to Kindle. However, Word is a perfectly valid way for the self-publisher to get started. Pretty much everyone has Word. If you're writing a novel or if you're writing a short story or poetry collection, you have probably written it in Word. You're probably comfortable in Word. My first book was published and uploaded in Word. It works if you know how to use it and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to use it and I'm going to show you a couple different formatting things that uh, will get you through either a text-based novel or short story format or a poetry format and I'm going to show you how to easily format things so that it will show up correctly on an e-reader. So let's get started. What we have is we have our manuscript and what I've got, I've got three things here. I've got two poems, I've got a short poem, I've got some, a short story, and I've got a slightly longer poem. This is for formatting reference. So we're going to do different ways to format these things. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to strip all the formatting because this is your original document. You've gone back and forth on this. You may have emailed it to other people. They may have made comments or suggested changes. And it's going to be a mess. Even if it looks clean and pretty like this, there may very well be hidden formatting within the document that you can't see and that you wouldn't be able to see unless you got into the code that will screw up Amazon when you try to upload it and it will just mess up the whole system. So we are going to strip the formatting as the very first thing we do. Now there are two ways to do this. The first one, both of them, you highlight everything. Highlight your entire document. Now the first way, the most common way is to right click, um, cut this, and paste it onto uh, like a notepad document, one of those simple documents that come with all computers um, that has very little formatting. Paste it onto there, let it load, and then cut it again and paste it into a brand new Word document. That will strip all the formatting. Um, however, the way I like to do it is to come over here um, you're going to go into the Home tab of Word, and you're going to go into this little button, which is Strip Formatting. Okay, Clear all formatting. Remove all formatting from the selection, leaving only the normal unformatted text. All right. That should do it. All right. So you're going to lose all your special everything, but that's okay. Because you probably, when you were typing, you probably had the habit of every time you start a paragraph, you've had a new tab. Right, you don't want tabs in an ebook format that will mess you up. You don't want any tabs, so stripping all the formatting helps with that. And I will show you how to go and put those back in in a way that the computer will accept it. So, the next thing we need to do is create a title page. So, we're going to make some space here, and the title of our work is Poems by Me by Cynthia Payne. Ta -da. So that's the only thing we want on this title page and we want it to be alone. We want it to be by itself. We don't want, uh, we, we want the e-reader to have to flip to the next page. So we want to go to insert page break, right? All right. And that will tell the software that this is the only thing that needs to be on this page. So now we can make this a little bit pretty. Um, you don't really want to go above a 16 font that can mess up the e-reader a little bit. And also keep in mind, there's really no sense in getting all fancy with your fonts, okay? Because the e-reader chooses its own fonts and it's going to be pretty standard. So Amazon has uh, gotten really annoyed with people for trying to force their own fonts onto the documents. So they've really cut down on what you're able to do. You can do more in programs like Siegel 
but in Word documents it's very limited so it's best just to not even bother. And if you can hear my kids in the background they're uh, they're in the next room over watching a, a movie so I apologize for that but that's what that noise is if you can hear it. So what we're going to do we're going to play with the size a little bit and we're going to center it but we're going to keep it really very simple and we're not going to do anything too fancy. So we're just the whole goal is to get it up on Amazon and get it published. So I'm going to go to the home tab here and we can go ahead and center this and we can maybe just give it like an extra line and create just a little bit of space here. Now keep in mind this page size is not the size of an e-reader so you don't want to create too much. You, you don't want to make it look like oh I want this you know author name way at the bottom of the page so that it, it looks all nice. Um, I wouldn't put more than three or four spaces between here. Okay so uh, in fact I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna do that. So uh, just keep it very simple. Chances are to be frank uh, that Amazon will see that this is just a title page and that the readers aren't going to be that interested in it and they're just going to have the reader automatically skip over that and start on your first page anyway. So most people aren't even going to see this so don't worry too much about this. Um, all right. After the title page we do need a copyright page so we are going to insert another page break. We're going to come over here. Um, I I like to do the dedication and copyright in the same page because again Amazon's probably just going to skip over it because no one cares. But you do need a copyright statement and we want this over here. So copyright is nothing special. Okay, They're all you need copyright the year you're publishing it. All right, you need to insert that fancy little symbol. So you go into the insert tab, go all the way over here to symbol. All right. And I've used it before. Uh, so it's kind of toward the top here, that little C in a circle, the, the copyright symbol. Uh, you can go to more symbols and search around for it until you find it. I'm going to insert there by Cynthia Payne. All rights reserved. That's all you need. You actually technically don't even need all right reserved. You just need copyright, that little c, by the, the year, the little c, by, by your name. That's all you need. That's the magic. You're covered. Congratulations. Some people like to write a nice little disclaimer saying, hey, don't sue me if this resembles you. Uh, you, you don't need it. copyright, the year it's published, little copyright symbol by you. All right, it's reserved. All right. Now, if you want, you can add a dedication page. You would do an insert page break again, dedication to whoever, or you could add it right here. You know, um, that would be nice too. But we're we're all done here, so I'm going to insert another page break, and we're going to start on the actual text here. So after my copyright page I want a table of contents. That's going to be important particularly if if you're just writing a novel or a novella or a single work you do not need a, a table of contents page but if you're writing a book of poetry if you're writing a collection of short stories you need you need that you need a table of contents. So and in an ebook you need it to be hyperlinked because page numbers mean nothing in an ebook. So what we're going to do, we have three works and we are going to tell the computer that we want the title of these works to be hyperlinked in a table of contents. All right, this is not as scary as it sounds. This is actually quite easy. So what we're going to do, we're going to highlight the title of each work and we are going to make them heading one. All right, so you're on the home tab. You come up here to styles, heading one. All right, heading one. And it might change the formatting a little bit. That's fine. Don't worry about it. So to the next title, heading one. All right, now to the next title, 
heading one. All right, that's all you got to do right now. So everything is heading one. Now what we can do? Here's the fun thing. We can go up to heading one, right click, all right, and modify. And because it's a little easier to read if it's you know a little more stylized, what we can do is make this a little bigger. All right. We want these to be centered. This is just for readability. And yeah, that's fine. So yeah, just we made it a little bigger and we centered it. But now, because the computer says, oh, this is heading one for everything, it's going to change everything that's been marked as heading one into that, you know, into that nice style there. All right. So that's going to give us our table of contents. So what we're going to do, we're going to come up here right after our copyright page, insert a new page break. So we're on a nice clean page. Now we want to go to our top tabs here, go to references. Click on references. Over here, table of contents. So we are going to click on that, table of contents. And because uh, this is an ebook, we are going to need to go to custom table of contents. It's going to pull it up. Okay, so you can search from different templates. You can do classic, and it's going to look like this. You know, it's going to be all, you know, capitals. You can go more formal. And there are three headings. So show levels. This is just showing one level. If you show two levels, this is what the different headings would look like. So we put all of our titles as heading one. What you might do if you have groupings of, say, poems, let's say you have 10 poems that are all about horses and you want to organize them in that way. So heading one would be, you know, your section title, which is poems about horses. And heading two would be all the titles of the poems, the different titles that are about horses, and they would all be organized here. And then you would have a different one, poems about aardvarks, you know, and obviously you'd have like 20 poems when you would only have 10 about horses. So that's how that could be organized. But we only have three titles. We don't need any headings. So we're not going to worry. So we don't have anything marked as heading two or heading three. So we're not even going to worry about looking at those. Very, very important in an ebook, you want to make sure this box is checked. Use hyperlinks instead of page numbers. If that's not checked, then it's just going to go to whatever page number it's on. But an ebook does not have page numbers. Use hyperlinks instead of page numbers. Uh, we do not need to show page numbers here. All right. Now, I don't like <laughs> Now, I don't like it all capital like that. So, I'm going to go that's class um, simple. I what is that? No. So from um, classic from template. There we go. Okay. Don't show page numbers. Make sure hyperlinks page numbers. Okay. So and that should that's good. We should hit OK and it should create our table of contents for us. Ah, very good. So here are all the titles of the different works. Okay. And this is in a um, an edit view, so we're not going to see the hyperlink. But if we go up to our tabs and we go to view, and we look at where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We look at web layout. Okay, so web layout. This is our title page, this is our copyright page, and nice, those nice little blue underlines that's hyperlinked, that's our table of contents, so that works, excellent. So we are going to go back to print layout. Excellent, so that's how you make a hyperlinked table of contents. So now for the nitty gritty. Now you can expect to spend some time on this portion of the formatting. This can, there's a lot of nitty gritty, particularly in poetry. You're going to want to think long and hard about how many poems you have, how many lines, how you want it formatted. 
and you want to balance that with how difficult it's going to be to format um, because the truth is word is not really set up for poetry it's set up for narration it's set up for novels and short stories so and the way I mean is that generally a poem is going to look something like that okay so every other line is going to be indented that is a pain in the butt to make <laughs> because every time you hit enter on the computer that is telling the computer that it's a brand new paragraph and it's easy to give very specific paragraph formatting but not so easy to do inter-paragraph formatting. So in order to make this still the same sentence, I'd have to have it on the same line. But that doesn't make any sense in formatting for a poem. So in order to get the standard formatting, which is this, without using the tabs, because you don't want to use tabs. So I'm going to, because I was messing with this, I'm going to strip all that formatting. So we are going to play with these styles a little bit, all right, with these headings. So what we are going to do, we've used heading one, so we don't want to use heading one for anything else, but we are going to, what you can, uh, how do I want to do this? Each one is a new paragraph. So what we're going to do, we're going to have two separate headings, okay? and we are going to alternate them and one is going to be heading two because we've already used heading one and the other is going to be heading three and heading two is going to have an indent and heading three is not going to have an indent all right makes sense okay so we are going to what you can do to get it right right click the highlighted amount go to paragraph Now, let's see here. Alignment is left, that's good. It doesn't really look good centered. I don't think you can make it centered. You can do whatever you want here, but I think it would look nice if it were indented just a little bit. If the whole thing were indented and then the alternating lines were indented even more. So what you wanna do, you wanna have an indent left and then the first line, you do wanna have it indented more even though this is only one line in some e-readers, especially if the reader forces the font to be much larger than what the screen can, can accommodate, then it may go on to the next line. So it's really best to go ahead and set it up as if, as if it were a larger uh, line of text. Spacing, you want to put as zero. Okay, that will get rid of this little this space in there. Right, and that should do it. Okay, very good. Now, still highlighted, I want to go to Heading 2. I want to right click and I want to say Update Heading 2 to match selection. So it's going to tell the computer that everything Heading 2 should match the highlighted selection as far as formatting goes. All right. So now I should be able to go to the second line and hit Heading 2. Ta-da! So now we're going to go and do heading three. So I'm going again to right click. I'm going to go to paragraph. Now in this case, I do want a little bit of indent. I just think it will look nicer on the e-reader if it's not all the way to the edge of the screen. So just a little bit of indent and I'm going to get rid of the after. Okay. And I'm not going to do anything special with that first line because I only want it indented there. Very good. So that I'm going to right click on heading three, update heading three to match selection. And now I can go here and hit heading three. All right, so now I can go heading two, heading three, heading two, heading three. Ta da! And this is how you want to go through your entire work here. Um, can I do, yeah, no, I don't want to, you can get rid of lines, you know, so it has that. I don't want to do that. Now this is tedious, but it, uh, it does need to be done. So just 
know you're going to spend some time doing this and know you're probably going to change your mind and probably frustrate yourself, but you know, it's, it's the sort of thing that needs to be done. Now, I will say, if you've got a ton, if you've got 40 pages of this sort, then you probably don't want to be spending the time uh, to go through all of this. So you may want to choose a simpler formatting style. So what you may say is, okay, um, I just want these to not have this extra space in between. I don't want to worry about indents. Just treat them all the same, but they'll still be in these little four sections. Or maybe just the first line will be an indent. That you can do. So you can, for that, you can go to paragraph. Actually, no, you can't do the first one because these are all different paragraph. Dang it. Okay, sorry. I lied. So, um, but what you can do, you can do just a basic indent across all of them and get rid of the space in between. Okay, and it'll look like that. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna update heading four to update heading four to look like that. So the nice thing is now if I decide, okay, I like heading four better. Now I can highlight, you know, a couple paragraphs here and do mark them all as heading four. And they will all go to look the same as that. All right? And that doesn't look half bad, particularly if you've got a lot to get through. Now the only reason there's an extra space here is because there's an, I hit enter again. Okay, so you can just, you know, delete that enter and it'll all look like that. That the computer is treating each one of these as a new paragraph. I just happen to hit enter twice when I created that. Um, but I want I want this alternating, so I'm gonna do undo and go back to that. And I'm going to finish doing this. All right, very good. So, cool. Now, one thing is we want each work to start on a fresh page, right? So we don't care if one work, you know, goes on to the next page, but we want a nice clean break in between the work. So we're going to go nice and tight up there to the first letter. We're going to insert a page break, right? Very good. So now we have a short story. We have a narration. And we've gotten rid of all the tabs, but we still want it to look you know, the way a book is formatted. You know, if you go open up a fiction book, there's going to be each paragraph. There's not going to be the space in between paragraphs, but the paragraphs are going to be differentiated by having a tab start on each first line. Now we can do that. So what we're going to do, we're going to select paragraph here. So we are going to tell the computer that we want the paragraphs to not have the space in between them, but we want the first line to be indented. So alignment is left. That's fine for indentation. We don't want any mass indentation, but we do want the first line under special to be indented and that default is fine. As far as spacing goes, uh, before that's fine after we want to get rid of this after okay hit okay okay that looks good so we want to highlight it and I'm going to update heading 5 to match selection just to show you because I have my my standards that I use in most things already ready to go so heading 5 is going to be my normal I think it's the same here but I'm not sure so we're gonna use heading 5 you can use normal you can use any of these over here um, for some reason these give me problems I don't know why but the headings are fun so now I want to highlight all of the other paragraphs in this short story Markham is heading 5 Ta -da! and now the nice thing is if you decide you don't like that indent if you decide you want spaces after the paragraphs all you have to do is go over to heading five let's say that 
I don't want it to be formatted this way. Let's say I want it to be formatted more like a nonfiction where they don't have that indent and they do have that space. All right. So if I wanted to do that, I would go to heading five, I would right click, I would go to modify. All right. So here I am. That's what it looks like. I want to go to paragraph in the format tabs and I want to say, you know, what? I don't want that that special indent on the first line and after each paragraph I want a bit of a break All right so let's so it would then look like that and I would hit OK and it will update everything that is marked as head, heading 5 to the new standard alright I don't want that I want to keep it like this but that's the beauty of going ahead and doing all this work. You can then make changes very, very easily. So I now have another uh, work here that I want to insert a page break on. Very good. So now I have a, a poem. So, but I've already done the work of modifying my headings. So I can just go to heading two, heading three, Hitting two and hitting three, and they'll all be formatted exactly the way I want it. And that's all for that's all for my work here. Um, let's see here. That should be about it. That's pretty much what you need to do in order to format for Amazon Kindle in Word. That's that's the the bare bones basics. So. So now we're going to save our file here and documents and we're going to do, 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 do. go into my file and we're going to save it. Poems by me and I'm going to save this in, yeah, Poems by me. So. And that, that's really it. That's how you do that formatting thing. Okay, uh, just as a little addition now that I have filmed the first video that I'll be posting about um, actually uploading the document, I've noticed that my titles over here uh, are slightly off-centered. So all of these were a little bit more to the right than I wanted. So um, pretty sure this was heading one. Yeah. So what I'm going to do to fix that. Yeah, heading one. So what I'm going to do to fix that, I'm going to uh, right click on heading one and hit modify. And I'm going to try to figure out why it's like that. And I suspect it's because, yeah, okay. So it's exactly what I thought it was. So it is centered, but the indentation has a special first line of a half. So I'm going to make there be no special um, indentation there. And I'm going to fix that and it should apply to all of it and it all switch back, right? And just, yeah, that does look more centered now. Okay, so that fixes that. That's the only thing to do to fix that. And that's why we look at it in the previewer of Kindle, just see if everything looks right. And it's it's literally that easy to fix. So you would save it now and you would go re-upload it to Amazon uh, self-publish and that's it. So thank you very much. That's it for part three. And I am very excited to hear your thoughts on this series. Do you want a part four? Is there some sort of information you're looking for that I have not covered here? Would you be interested in seeing a short series publishing your ebook for advanced dummies? So the next step up of doing things a little fancier or a little more advanced for each of these steps. That's one thing I was thinking about doing, but I'm interested in hearing your thoughts if you would be interested in seeing it. So talk to me in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And until then, bye bye.